Hello and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide and yes, another episode of Let's Play Planet Coaster here on our YouTube channel. And a big episode this one, it really is an important one because for the first time since I started working on this park in November 2016, guests are going to step inside what is now known as Volcano Springs. Yes, that is the name of the park. Some Eagle Eye viewers might have spotted that down in the bottom just here. Uh, but yes, Volcano Springs is now the name for this park. It's got a huge backstory and I'll explain quite a bit about that a little bit later on in the episode. And as it's been quite a while since I last did an episode, quite a bit of work has actually been done around this area to make sure that this park is ready to accept guests in for the first time. Uh, now I've gone around the park, I've added in bins and benches, more lighting all the way around the area, some of the uh, areas around here, what I did a few episodes back. Uh, I've gone through them all and made sure that the areas are all ready to go uh, to get guests inside. Of course, I've also done some work here on the centre point of the park. It is called Volcano Springs and there it is, a huge volcano uh, but yes we're at a very sort of big point now in this the first time guests are going to step inside of course it's May 2017 and I've been waiting for this moment for a long time I know a lot of you guys have as well I can't wait to see how the guests react to the, some of the rides in this park uh, the food outlets the footpaths and thus the general flow of the park let's see how it goes now I've got to the stage now where I thought you know what let's get this park open uh, this whole sort of half of the park if you like is finished in the next episode I'm going to be working on my fantasy area which is going to sit at the back just here I think we're going to start off with a junior coaster uh, first for that one. I mean, we've got two big coasters here for thrill seekers. Let's go in with the junior coaster in the next episode. Uh, and then I'm going to have another area, so area at the back just here on the right, followed by a final area down here in the bottom corner. Uh, so yeah, it is very, very exciting. I've got some names to reveal first, and I'm going to explain a little bit about what I've done just here uh, since the last episode. So let's go back down here to the main entrance. I built this across the past few episodes, and look at it now. It looks even better with that focal point down the bottom, the volcano itself, the central point of Volcano Springs. Uh, and there it is. Some of you might have noticed down the bottom there as well. I have changed the name of the park now officially. It's no longer TPW Park, uh, but here we go. I mean, look at this. It looks fantastic. You've got the hotel as the main entrance. The turnstile is just down there uh, below as well. As we move around into this area here, you really start to see that focal point. That will actually be home to, if this could be done in the game, it would be a nighttime spectacular fireworks show, very phantasmic style style show just on there. So I don't know why I said style twice, I'm just getting excited, aren't I? Because uh, it's such a big point. I've been working on this for, what, six months now, and it's so good to actually be at the point we're going to get to see the guest reactions uh, to this park. Uh, so yes, this main entrance area itself, uh, many people suggested this name in the comments over the past few episodes. It is now known as the Gardens of Enchantment. Of course, we've got two attractions down here. We've got a carousel. Uh, that is known, thanks to Jack Edwards, as the Pink Tulip Horses. Uh, so thanks for your name. And also thanks to Jack. He's come up with a name for our chair swings attraction down here as well, uh, the Swirling Swings. So I think that fits really well. I mean, this whole area here, the Gardens of Enchantment, some really nice planting all the way around. We've got some good food outlets and shops down there as well. A few little finishing touches have added in, things like this uh, little wacky cart that we've got there as well. Well, more details on the building. Of course, there's still signs as to what needs to be updated, but it doesn't mean I'm going to go, not going to go back on these areas and add more to it. Uh, so yes, very exciting. I've also done this bridge just here again. Uh, more to be added, I think, to this one. But just for now, I just wanted to make sure we're at a stage where it looks kind of finished and we can get it open. But uh, yeah, that's the main bridge for the Park Railway. Uh, now this isn't actually going to open the Park Railway. I've got 11 attractions in here now to open, uh, but the railway isn't going to be one of those. That will be the 12th attraction. We're going to keep that closed because my fancy area, the train is going to run all the way around the back there and connect back up with the station here. So there's going to be one more station for that because uh, I'm planning on having a monorail running around this side. I think it'll fit with a futuristic uh, feel quite a bit as well. So uh, yeah, really exciting with that one. Uh, but the train will remain closed until the fancy area opens uh, in a couple of episodes time. So yes, here it is, the volcano itself. And you can see what I've started to do here. I've actually made some amphitheater style uh, viewing areas here for my show venue, arena entrance, as you can see there. Arena exit on the other side. This is basically just using footpath uh, and benches all the way along there. And of course, in an ideal world, you'd sit here and you'd watch this big nighttime show what would happen on the volcano itself. I'm imagining pyrotechnics, all sorts of lighting, fireworks, special effects, put a bit of smoke in there, but there's a lot more to be done with that as well. Uh, this is sort of all part of my sort of 
theme what I'm going with, if you like, of this volcano springs. Basically, various towns have been set up uh, all the way around this active volcano. Uh, they've all set up and they're all trying to make tourism out of it, basically. You've got this western area over here. Uh, of course, you've got Treasure Reef just up here. And Wild Frontier works really well with it as well. So, yeah, you've got this little area down here as well. And this is something to be expanded on. Uh, as we go around into the fancy area, all around here there'll be more buildings, all leading up to this big fantasy uh, themed area at the back just there. Yeah. Going back to some names then, I mean, I have spoke already about quite a few of the names, but I'm going to reveal the name now uh, for the Pirates Dark Ride. Uh, so a lot of thought has gone into this one uh, about what name I should go for. And thanks very much to Andrew, uh, who's come up with the name for this one. He first he said, Rockwork, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Uh, he said it should be called Mutiny, the Battle for Treasure Reef. I absolutely love that name. I did debate quite a few names, but I thought, you know what, that is the one for this dark ride. So thank you to everyone that suggested your names. Uh, I do think that works really well well so there we go uh, also over this side as well we did put in the little children's flat ride just here as well uh, we've got a name for this one just here as well uh, and that is thanks to game master james uh, seashell heights uh, for that one just there so it means that everything has now got names in this park and we are ready to go now of course you can't run a theme park without staff uh, and in this episode we're going to go into park management just down here and talk all about these different things up here we've got marketing staff of course we've got security now in here as well uh, which is good I have to go back through the park and add CCTV cameras because that's something what you can do as well uh, a little bit about the update then from Planet Coast of course yes we have got now security we've also got a few new rides as well and so if we go down into the ride section just here, uh, you'll see we've got a brand new flat ride just here as well, uh, Zozo. It's basically like a dive bomber uh, style attraction. You've also got dueling coasters, which are available now as well, uh, which is quite cool. And a few other bits and bobs in there as well that's well worth looking into. One of my favourite ones, though, comes under the tracked rides. And we've actually now got, it was a roller coaster tycoon classic. We have now got ring racers, which is basically go-karts. These look absolutely awesome. And I do think we'll have an Autopia style attraction in my future area at the top just here right let's get into staff and operations let's think about staffing this park up uh, and it's my first time i've really opened a parking planet coaster so i've had a little mess about with one before but not properly so let's think about staff get some staff inside before we open this park for the first time since november last year uh, and really get to see how this place operates wow uh, but look at that it does look fantastic and thanks to all of you for your inspiration down below in the comments like saying the next episode we're going to go straight back in with building a coaster a fantasy themed coast which is going to sit on this site just here. Now this is the exciting part then, so if we go down into park management which is just down here in the bottom corner, it brings up this huge tab which has got so much on it, it's got graphs, ticket prices, all these different options at the top, so marketing, uh, research finances, staff, guests, attractions uh, and shops, security management, that's one of the new ones from the update as well, and um, we'll get into that at some point in the series. Uh, but yes, so let's get on the basis then, so this is an overview just here. Uh, the park opening times, entrance prices, we've got it at $15 at the moment. We can set a park capacity and subject to how it runs, uh, I might just do this because obviously I am a bit concerned about how this park's going to run in terms of when we get all the rides going round and, and guests inside the park, but we'll see how that one goes for now. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about staff. So if we go on to hire and view staff, this now gives me a list of all the staff that are currently employed in my park. Uh, now it's got the names just down there at the side, workload, uh, a lot of them are on low at the moment because obviously they're all just food outlets at the moment as you can see there they've pulled the shutter down because uh, they're not very happy and as we all know at a theme park you've got to keep your staff happy uh, yes for guest service but also just to make sure that they're all enjoying the job and, and not having to do too much work and that sort of thing so you can see just here we've got happiness levels all down the middle and you can actually change their happiness level by upping their training uh, now this is quite an interesting one, you can actually up their training here uh, with a price. So say here we've got Jodie, hi Jodie, welcome to the park, we could up her training there. Uh, there you go, now we can't train her again until June the 21st. So what I'm going to do here, there you go, look that's boosting the happiness already on all these staff uh, because they're getting extra training. So if we do that and click down there, they're all going to get a little bit happier. Now also, we can increase their salary uh, just here at the side as well. Uh, so say, I, I'd never pay sort of someone different rates if they're doing the same job. So when we get janitors, park cleaners, mechanics, that sort of thing, I'd always make sure they're being paid the same. Um, so yeah, you've got to think about this. I mean, look at that already. It's just 
up in their happiness because they're getting training with extra roles and responsibilities. Uh, and what we'll do at some point, as they get, that's another thing with this game I've noticed so far, uh, once you up the training level, they then expect to get paid more. Uh, so that's one we have to look at as well. We can also do a rotor here at the side as well. Uh, and we also select where we want people to be uh, inside the park as well. So. Let's get all them trained just there. These are all just my F&B staff because obviously we want to make sure that the park is going to open successfully with all our food and beverage units. So uh, let's leave them doing that for now. Oh, I think I've missed one just there. I saw an arrow somewhere. There we go, that one. So in terms of new staff, I mean, you've got all these options down the side as well. There's so much to it. Work rotors, you can create a new roster, uh, security guards and vendors. There, honestly, there is so much to it. There really is, you don't realize. Uh, but yes, of course, the main things we need to run the park are maintenance, uh, janitors, and now security as well. So let's go on to a mechanic then. Let's go and click on him. There we go, and we're gonna place some mechanics inside the park. So if I pop him down, just there. There we go. Welcome to your new job uh, here at Volcano Springs. If I just exit that then a second, click on him, and here we go. We can see exactly what's going on here. So we've got, um, there we go, mechanic status, wandering. So I assume that will go to fixing a ride or whatever he's doing. Workload normal. It shows that he's a trainee at the moment. It shows his happiness level. Uh, it does, there you go. Recent thoughts. Things are okay here. Uh, so to keep him happy, we can up his training, but obviously then we're going to have to up his salary. Uh, oh, here we go, we've got the different tasks, what he can do. Where's he gone? He's doing a little stroll around the park, welcome to the springs. Oh, that's a good angle of the volcano. Uh, inspections, refurbishments, breakdowns, vandalism. Uh, oh, so he fixed his vandalism as well, which is interesting. Uh, there we go, we can select where we want him, uh, free roaming. Um, we're going to add a roster if we want him to focus uh, on certain areas or certain attractions. So if we click attractions, he'll just focus on those, which is quite interesting as well. So, yeah, we'll leave that for now. Anyway, let's get some more uh, mechanics inside the park. Obviously, well, we've got 11 attractions, so we'll have 11 mechanics uh, because then we've got a, a mechanic for each person. Aren't we? So I'm going to spread these around the park. So that'll be two. Put a few up here. Three. Four. I do love what Frontier have done uh, with this in terms of making it so realistic. The fact that you can select all these things to do. I mean, I know in Roller Coaster Tycoon you could sort of select where you wanted your mechanics and cleaners to go. It was like a blue square and you had to uh, uh, select that. I've lost track of how many I've put in now. Is that 11? Let's have a look. Like I say, you can just go down to part management uh, on the staff there and then we can view all staff. And just split them up there as well. Like we could go down to mechanics just here. How many is that there? We've got 11, have we? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, let's have one more mechanic then inside my park. And 11. There we go. Right, let's go back to the park management then. Let's look at uh, janitors. There we go. He looks quite a, an old janitor, doesn't he, there? Let's uh, place quite a few of these around the park. So. Obviously, we janitors, we want this park to be spick and span. Uh, I have put a lot of you to comment and say, oh, there's not enough bins around the park uh, and benches. That was something that, as we're building the areas, to be honest, I just forgot to add in. So uh, I have gone back through all the areas and added bins, more lighting, as I said, as well, uh, all around the park. So, yeah, this is quite an interesting one. So we'll just select quite a few of these and put them all around the park, ready to get this open. God, it seems weird seeing people walking around. I just can't believe we're at this stage. I mean, we've gone so far with this project. I remember building that RMC coaster, uh, the hybrid, just down here in Western Frontier. We built that uh, back in November, and I just can't believe that. Like, and then we did the saloon. I spent a whole episode doing the saloon. I mean, looking back, that was quite a long sort of time to spend doing a saloon, but it was my first proper building. And I think, I'm sure a lot of you will agree, that my building skills have got a lot better as we've got on with the series. So. There we go, that'll do for janitors for now. Like I said, there's no limit, we can go back. Uh, as far as I know, there's no limits anyway. Uh, security, again, a new one from the latest update. So let's put uh, just a few security guards in for now. And um, we'll go into that and have a little look. So I'm not too sure how that's gonna work in terms of uh, security. I think uh, guests are gonna go around breaking things now. So we'll have to look into that and maybe CCTV cameras, all that kind of stuff. It really is like ruining a proper theme park, this one. I know how the likes of Disney and Merlin feel now. Uh, there we go, right, let's uh, just exit that for now. We don't want to put any more in. So let's go and have a little look then at what some of these staff actually have to do. So we've already had a look at what the mechanics have to do. Let's go and have a look at what my janitors need to do. So if we go down to janitors, here we go. Let's have a look, we've got Warner there, here we go, part Warner. <laughs> let's get him up. 
the salary, £120 a month. Uh, oh, there you go, we can select if you want to do bins, just litter on the floor, vomit. Uh, there we go, we can select that. And again, have a work roster as well. Training, there we go, we're going to up his training. But we can't train, because we've just taken him on with a new job, we can't train him until the 22nd of June, which isn't far away, actually. So... There we go, that will increase productivity, happiness, and higher salary expectations. So I do love this. So Warner, don't worry, I'll make sure you get some training soon. Oh, there we go, recent thoughts, money really isn't an issue. Everything is all right, I suppose. So there we go, let's leave them for now. And obviously we can up the training shortly. If we go back onto all staff there, you can see that everyone now is getting a little bit happier. Oh, here we go, this person here, uh, Andreas there, he needs a bit more training. There we go, boost his morale a little bit. It's a very ongoing project, this, as you can see, but like I say, I've just took some staff on, so uh, that's why I can't sort of uh, staff uh, train people at the moment. So anyway, that's enough with staff for now. Let's go on this one then. So guest thoughts. Oh my God, there's a lot to that, isn't there? Demographics and adult groups. Oh, I love that. So it's going to tell me when I open the park uh, what groups I've got inside. Adult groups, teen groups, family groups. That's quite cool. Guest thoughts, I assume they'll all come up there. A graph, oh my god, it's so complex, but I love it. All the different data, what we can get, teen groups again, uh, yeah, attractions and shops. So this lists everything what we've got inside the park. Prestige, how important they are to the park. Obviously at the moment, not much at all because no one's ridden these, so I'm sure that'll change once we get this park open. Here we can select prices for the rides. I've set all my rides as free at the moment because I'm gonna be doing pay for, uh, for entry. Uh, and then we've got the status there. So if I go on then, we can test it and then we can open the attraction there as well, which I'll be doing in a few minutes time. Uh, when we open this park. In terms of finances, we're not going to worry too much about that. With this just being a sort of a sandbox mode, we're not going to get into all the finances and stuff. I'd like to at some point with this, but there's a lot of red on there, a lot of debt in those finances. Obviously, we're paying staff at the moment and there's no uh, money coming in. So, and there you go, that's an overview. Basically, everything what you can do just there in your park management uh, it is fantastic. It really is uh, what the thought about. And we really are at the stage now. We've got staff uh, inside this park, we've got the attractions. I think it's time to open this park uh, for the first time and let's see how Volcano Springs Cove when people uh, come inside. Now, this is the point where I'm going to get to see how the queue lines function, how Silly things like restaurants, for example, up here, uh, you know, I've got these, these restaurants in. Does it mean that now we've got the restaurants in there, they're going to start queuing here and causing a blockage? It's going to be very exciting. Uh, so let's get the shutters up. Let's get this park open. And here we go, Volcano Springs. It's time for your opening day uh, here in Planet Coaster.
So I hope you enjoyed that little montage there, a little bit of footage from around Volcano Springs and seeing the park in action. It still feels so surreal after six months of building it and playing this game and putting so many hours into it, just to see the rides going around with people on and everybody going around the park. Uh, it is fantastic. So I've been playing, like I say, for just over an hour. I thought, let's have a little look at the guest thoughts. So if we click on guest just here, uh, here we go. Here's all the different thoughts we've got across the park. So 47% think the park is great. 22% think it's time to go home. I would say that is because it's busy. Uh, some of the queues are absolutely ridiculous at the moment. Uh, it definitely made me think I need some more high capacity coasters and 12% uh, uh, have arrived. Obviously, that's going to go down because I've now stopped letting people in. We're at capacity. It's a quiet day today for this park. It's quite Alton Towers day, that is 6,000. So uh, Battle of the Treasure Reef is free, but parking is so cheap. That one's going on swirling swings. This place has great scenery. That one makes me happy. 25% of people think that. 13%, I'm not keeping that one to go on Dorado Falls Shipping Co. Um, what other big ones have we got in there? 11% Black Bay's River Rapids is free, but park entry is so cheap. Overall, I think that's really good uh, reviews that we've got there. 14% a bit fed up with having merchandise pushed down the face, so that's quite interesting. Uh, but overall, I think that's gone down quite well. We've got a guest summary here, so 2,150 guests uh, are adult groups. Uh, we've got teen groups, 2,358, and family groups, 2,129. So overall, really nice and even that. It's very nicely spread, actually. Uh, it's good to see we haven't just got loads of thrill seekers coming in. Uh, he busts all going there in the background looking great. Uh, and also, we've got some family groups in here as well. So I definitely think a big family area is definitely something what's needed next. Uh, and in the, when this episode ends in a few minutes' time, in the next episode, uh, I'm going to go straight into working on this brand new area. Uh, and like I say, I'm going to get all the guests out, uh, go back. I mean, in terms of gas, it is running okay. I mean, we're not getting many frames per second, but that was to be expected, really. It's probably getting about, what, 12 to 15 frames per second now uh, there's this many gas in. I did notice as soon as it got... Uh, to 4,000, then that's when we really started to lose the frames per second. I mean, you can see here, we're really starting to lose it now. Uh, but overall, you know, it's not gone too well. So I'd, I'd say that this part really needs capping off at 4,000 when I open it next time, because uh, that seems to be the turning point. But in terms of queue across the park, uh, look at this, Iron Stallion's got a massive queue. Uh, Dorado Falls over here, that's got a massive queue. Uh, Tempest has just broke down, that's just had some technical problems. And so obviously with this breaking down, um, I've decided to give this a bit of a, a refurb, so to speak. You can actually refurbish a ride. So everybody's walked out of the queue now. It looks like they're heading uh, for the rapids. In terms of the rapids themselves, don't really show many shots of that. But uh, yeah, they seem to be running quite well. Quite a big queue for the rapids. There's some big queues on this park. I think ideally 6,000 guests is a little bit too many. And uh, here we go, look at the dark ride down here. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That is a massive queue. Um, wow, but it's, it's great to see. In terms of guest flow, though, it's gone really well. Like all these paths have been really well used. The guests are really spread out, really nice and even across the park, uh, which is really good to see. Now let's go back to staff. Let's have a little look at how my staff are doing. So if we go on to all staff, oh, here we go. The happiness levels are quite good. I have done another couple of steps of training. That means I've increased the salaries of some people uh, here as well. So you can see all my mechanics are now on $350 a month or a week, whatever that is. Uh, look at the janitors. Oh, they all seem quite happy again. Their training is all up to date just here as well. Can't train them until the 1st of October. The vendors now, the vendors generally seem quite happy that they're in the busy areas. Uh, but these, so some of these staff here uh, don't seem that happy. Like Samantha's down there quite low. These two are quite low here. I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce their names. I'm awful at pronunciation. Uh, but that's mainly because they're in areas that are quite quiet. So we need to keep them uh, quite active. But overall, staff are quite happy, which is good to see. Uh, workload's quite low, which they're quite happy about. So we'll keep giving them the training, we'll up the salaries uh, as we go. Guys, I'm loving operations on this game, and I think you'll agree, it's been a very successful opening. There could have been so many problems uh, that we have, but overall, 45% of people think the park is great. Uh, loads of other good positive stuff coming in as well, uh, which is really good to see. Overall, uh, down the bottom here, Part rating 4737, guest happiness plus 24%. Uh, we haven't done any marketing yet, I didn't want to push it. Uh, ride rating 1151, senior rating 2477. So, uh, but overall, like, there you go, look at that, that's uh, that's really good to see. Oh, it won't let me hover over it, but there you go. Overall, uh, guests are really happy there. So, I think for that was a really successful opening for this park. Uh, that is pretty much the end of this episode. I'm going to end with a few more shots of this park in action. Uh, but 
but I even enjoyed it and I enjoyed me sort of looking around Volcano Springs. I feel like we've done so much. I mean, you look at this part now, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, like I said, I'm going to keep playing it for a few hours, get used to park management and running it. And then the next episode, we're going to have an empty park and I'm going to start building up at this top section just here. What do you think, guys, in terms of a family coaster? Uh, what do you think could fit up here? It's going to be a brand new area, fantasy, the full themed area here at the park. Um, but yeah, comment below, what do you think I should go for in terms of family rides? In fact, let's have a little look uh, at coasters and see what we have got there. Well, it's starting to struggle a little bit now. Like I said, I think 4,000 was definitely the, uh, the cutoff, really. And here we go. If we look down here, junior coaster there. Definitely a launch coaster in the future. Not in my family area, but uh, maybe a junior dragon or a marathon spinning coaster. What do you think? Comment down below, and I'll definitely be building a family coaster in my fancy area uh, in the next episode. It seems that guests have started to increase again, even though I did cut it off, which is... Uh, quite interesting let's have a little look at uh at what's going on there so if we go over on to guess and then back on to overview interesting to see what's happening there in terms of people coming in hmm there we go it's actually ah there we go it's actually took the park capacity off now so i need to increase that again because people just keep coming in so yeah, i'm going to cap it again at 6,000. Anyway, that's quite interesting because I did actually exit the game just and then come back into it. Maybe it did that, I'm not too sure. 57% security to the part was high. I pickpocketed and got caught. Well, that's a good result. 43% uh, I've stolen enough for now. Time to leave and enjoy the proceeds of crime. <sighs> that isn't too good. So I think with that one, maybe more security is needed. I don't know. I'm loving all these different messages and stuff what we get. And overall, parts statistics. There you go. Fastest coaster, biggest drop. Wow, this game, guys, is absolutely incredible. I hope you've enjoyed it. Stick by me with Planet Coaster. There will be another episode in the next few days. I'm going to start building this family coaster and really crack on with that. Isn't it amazing, though, just to see guests inside this park? And to be honest, it's running a lot better uh, than expected. I just wish I think I am going to cap it at 4,000 guests because that was the turning point for it starting to, to lag and it's still dealable like this uh, but I would much rather uh, be running it at 4,000 guests and knowing that the queues aren't quite as silly as well I mean that long for a chair of plane really uh, thank you very much for watching another episode of Let's Play Planet Coast here on Theme Park Worldwide the park is now open and I'll see you in the next episode here on the channel which will be online in just a few days time thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video have a good week